All right, coach is, coach is at the podium. Uh, as I said, I know he wants to make an opening statement, so we'll have coach make that opening statement and then we'll go ahead and take questions. As a reminder, send me a message in chat if you have a question. So coach, when you're ready, go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, obviously Michigan week, really important week, rivalry, rivalry week. Um, a lot of, th a lot of uh, time and energy has been spent uh, into these next eight weeks and really look forward to kicking off the season here against Michigan at home with college game day being here. Uh, really exciting time and go for football. Uh, I do want to start, though, uh, just with, you know, um, you know, with the passing of Sid Hartman and how emotional, uh, you know, our building has been uh, since then. You know, to know Sid was to love Sid. Uh, Sid is a, what Minnesota is all about. And he was one of the first people I ever got a chance to meet uh, when I got here. And I didn't know anybody. And, you know, there's people that, you know, everybody's shuffling you around to go meet certain people. Well, Paul Rovnak, our sports information director, grabbed me immediately. So you got to talk to this one guy. Um, he's special. Uh, every, every, uh, every talk we had was, uh, it was unique. It was its own. He had his own questions. Uh, he constantly asked the right questions. We had a lot of private meetings, him and I, you know, there'd be, there'd be the press conference and then I'd have uh, my own time with Sid and, and he'd asked his questions during that time as well. And, and we had a lot of intimate talks, very private talks, but uh, away from football. There would be those, you know, 10 to 15 questions he would have. And then we'd also have our, our talks about life. And you're talking about someone who lived to 100 years old, worked his entire life, never looked at work as work, never looked at a job as a job. Uh, he literally did what he loved to do all the way through his passing. And we talked to our team last night about that. Uh, about finding something that you love to do that you never have to stop doing. And that's what Sid's about. Uh, he loved his career. He loved his job. He loved what he did. He loved sports. He loved Minnesota. And uh, again, to know him was to love him. And uh, I'm really going to miss him. And you're talking about a guy that lived to 100. Um, you know, last night we had one of our first here talks, helping end racism with education. And it was about the 1963 March on Washington and uh, a Philip Randolph and, and the economic equality and, and the voting rights and everything else the march was on and so many years that it, it took to get to that point. And uh, we kind of realized that in 1963, I mean, Sid was older than me than I am right now. So when you think about all the things that Sid Hartman saw in his life and all the experiences he had, uh, there was a reason why he captured the hearts of so many. And we're going to miss him. We love him. We send our heartfelt condolences to the entire Hartman family, uh, Chad and everyone uh, in his family. Just want to let you know we love him and we're going to miss him. But he will never, ever be forgotten inside our program. And I know with I speak for all Minnesota sports with that. So uh, we're working on some things that commemorate uh, Sid and have him represented every game with our football team. And we're working through some avenues and some channels right now to make sure that we can get that done. So just wanted to start with that. Uh, it, it's a very emotional time, but what we're going to do is celebrate Sid Hartman, celebrate Sid Hartman's life and make sure that how we live life is a direct reflection based on how Sid did as well. So with that, I guess we'll open up for questions. Coach, thank you for those, those very moving words. Uh, we'll go to uh, Chip Scoggins first with the uh, first question. Chip, go ahead, sir. Hey, PG. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, when you look around at, at college football and, and some of the disruptions that are going on with games postponed and players missing and coaches having to miss, how have you guys handled that? And, and how do you prepare for just the expected things that are going to pop up that seem in inevitable? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I think you guys asked me the question prior to that, Chip, of like, is this season real and does this season count? They all count. Um, every time you get a chance to play on Saturdays, they count. Uh, there are very different challenges this year than there usually is. You know, you can control a practice to limit certain injuries. You know, you know, going up to a certain game day, who's out, who's in, uh, how to be able to prepare for that. There's only so much time that you're allowed. There's only so much time in a day. And there's only so much preparation to go around and so many reps to get people prepared for. This is a completely different animal. Uh, kid test positive, they're out three weeks. That's almost half the season now. So uh, a kid could test positive on Friday and, you know, he's out for three straight games and you were planning on having him as the starter. 
Um, you know, we're very youthful on defense. We've got a lot of inexperienced players, very talented players, but we talked about that grasshopper, that jar on the grasshopper of taking that off and letting them jump. Uh, but there's a lot of inexperience uh, on that side of the ball. And then you add the people that are going to be there, not be there, not sure who's going to actually play in that game. Uh, you know, we have certain rules in the Big Ten we are following, but we feel like we're doing everything in our program to keep our players safe, healthy, make sure that we mask up, uh, you know, we practice social distancing. There's a lot of different practice habits that we've changed, a lot of different protocols that have taken place uh, that are different from the past. Uh, and again, I think our staff is doing a great job as well of, of, of practicing all the right protocols that are in place for us to be able to have a healthy season. But even with that, uh, you can't prevent it. Uh, coronavirus does not, um, it, it, it doesn't care, you know, whether you're a freshman or a senior, whether you have experience or, or no experience, it doesn't discriminate. Uh, it's going to find you on your football team somehow, some way, which it has. Uh, in certain instances, there's going to be teams that have more of it than less of it. You know, we have a city of, you know, three and a half million people, uh, maybe different than some small college towns. Um, and we're doing everything we can to prevent it and, and have a very healthy playing environment for our players every single day. But again, it's, it's preparing for ghosts, it's preparing for the unknowns, and you just have to be ready for it. You know, there's a lot of decisions you're making as a head football coach. Yes, for now, for 2020, you might play eight games, you might play seven, you might play five, you might play six. We don't know that. But we do know that we have to be able to prepare not only for 20 and have the most successful 20 we can possibly have, but also make decisions, too, for 2021. Um, you know, never sacrifice what you really want down the road for what you want right now. Uh, that doesn't mean we want to, don't want to win right now, that we that those things, and we want to. I mean, that, that that's – I think we made that very clear Then we're going to do everything we possibly can to, but there's also some challenges ahead of us that as a head coach, you got to be able to make for the long-term success of the program as well, that this year creates that maybe normal years don't instead of when maybe you start to rebuild a program. Uh, so there's been some challenges, but again, that's what makes it fun and exciting. And I say that because the challenges ahead of us uh, are, are why we're in this profession uh, is to be able to take those heavy storms and find a way to row through them. All right, thank you, Coach. Let's go to Dave Campbell with the Assassin Press. Hey, PJ, I, I'm just wondering if you think it's any uh, different to, to jump right into conference play, you know, without usual non-conference games. Um, I know, you, you know, typically we'll, you'll treat every game the same, but um, what are you sort of anticipating for any kind of, I don't know, learning curves for younger players or any of that type of stuff? Yeah, I mean, it, I think it only matters a little bit uh, when you're talking about some of the inexperienced players getting right into Big Ten play. Um, you know, they, that's their first game is going to be a rivalry game, uh, going to be for the Little Brown Jug against Michigan, college game day being here. But that's why you come to Minnesota. Those are the expectations and pressure that we're going to be able to put on, put on ourselves to be able to perform at a high level. Uh, but there are no easy games. It doesn't matter if it's non-conference, conference, college football. You only get 12 guaranteed opportunities. Um, no offense with major league baseball, you have an off day. Um, you get a chance to come back the next day, uh, for a hundred and plus 150 plus games, you know, it's even talking to Josh Donaldson, um, who happens to be my neighbor for the twins. It's, it's amazing. They're a sport that you hit three out of 10, you're an all-star. Uh, if you hit, you know, 30%, you know, you, you win 30% of your games in football, you're gonna get fired, you know? So, I mean, it, it's very different than that. So everything matters. Every game matters. Every uh, week of preparation matters, but that's that's the that's the you know that's the mentality our players have. It doesn't matter who we play, doesn't matter when we play. We have to be prepared to be at our best, uh, and this is something different than we've had here in the last three years. But I think there's other teams that have started with league play. Next year we open up with Ohio State as well. So I think the you know the change of it is you know you only get 12 games. They all count. They all matter. And they're all the most important game at that particular time. So, again, who you play doesn't determine that. All right, thank you, Coach. Let's go to Andy Greeter, uh, St. Paul Pioneer Press. Hey, PJ, how are you? I'm doing lean, Andy. Good to see you. Uh, I wanted to ask you just about Tanner. Um, obviously, you have the benefit of an experienced quarterback here this year. What do you want to see out of him? What's the relationship with Mike Sanford? And, and what type of freedom might he have uh, within the offense? Yeah, you know, our offense isn't exactly exactly the same as it was last year. We're constantly evolving, constantly finding ways to make it better. I think Mike Sanford's been really good for Tanner. Um, you know, Mike played uh, quarterback at a very high level. 
And when you play the position and you can coach the position, the fundamentals, the techniques, the small integral parts of playing the, the quarterback position, I think have really taken Tanner to the next level. I think the one thing, Tanner, you know, it's a different team than it was last year. It just is. It's a different fingerprint, especially with COVID in terms of people being out, uh, whether it was opting out, whether it's injuries, whether it's COVID. There's, it, it's going to be, at times, uh, different people week to week. And you have to be ready to, to change with that. You have to be willing to even adapt your play to the people around you. And I think that's where Tanner's got to evolve the most. And not that he isn't, he just got to continue to evolve the most. And that is making every single person around him better by elevating his play. Not meaning that he has to do the, somebody else's job for them. It's just how Tanner plays based on who's on that field at that particular time. I think that's what's going to elevate his game is being able to find a way to get everybody else around him to elevate their play based on how he plays. Uh, I think his leadership has gone through the roof. It's better now than it's ever been. His familiarity with the offense, his familiarity with his teammates um, has made him a better leader. And there's a challenge to be able to week to week. There could be different people in at different positions. There could be youthful movements at certain positions and to get all those guys to be able to play at a very high level that could be a different group from week to week will be the challenge for him. Thank you, Coach. Let's go to Joe Schmidt with KST. Joe? Hi, Joe. We there, Joe? Here we go. There we go. Perfect. Uh, uh, Coach, uh, have you talked to the team at all about the, the little brown jug and what it would mean to your program uh, to have that trophy in your case uh, for at least a year? Yeah, we always talk about uh, the rivalry games on Tuesdays of that week. If it is a rivalry week, we talk about the history of the trophy and where it came from and past games and kind of analyze the rivalry on Tuesdays. So uh, we've talked about the Little Brown Jug. They know what the Little Brown Jug is. They know about the rivalry. But, Joe, usually on Tuesdays is when we dive into that. So uh, we'll hit that tomorrow. Go to Daniel House with Gophers Guru. Hey, PJ, what does it mean to the university and program to have College Game Day on campus and back-to-back -back seasons? Yeah, I think it's only happened five times in Game Day's history uh, where you've had back-to-back -back home games. I think it's showing where our program's headed. I think it's showing our brand of the University of Minnesota, the state of Minnesota, the Twin City area, uh, our football program, uh, our, our row-the-boat culture. I, I think it's healthy. I, th I think it's beneficial for everybody involved. It takes a lot of people to put on that. It takes a lot of people to actually get that. Uh, but knowing that we have never had it before uh, and within the last year, right, we're having it twice uh, when we have two opportunities for really big home games. So I, I think it's, it's going to be a different environment than it was, uh, obviously, with, um, you know, not, not people being invited to the sets and things like that. Um, I don't know how all the rules go into that yet. I haven't had those meetings, but um, we're very appreciative of it, appreciative of it. Uh, very honored to host College Game Day. Uh, it's a big part of what college football is in 2020 uh, when you host College Game Day. It's an event. It's a spectacle. It's a chance for us to be able to put our program, our, uh, our university, our state on display in front of the whole country. And uh, I know our players always represent the state of Minnesota and the University of Minnesota in the first class way uh, the best they possibly can. And I think it's just it, it tells a lot of stories. And I think, again, I think it shows where this program's headed, not only just with the Big Ten, but nationally as we continue, um, you know, to, to make strides in recruiting uh, and also strides within our football team to, to know that, you know, we want to get back to those days of being a blue blood. And again, we're not ever going to just arrive on that day, but events like this back up what you're saying, back up what's going on uh, and continue to bring proof to what you're building with inside your walls. Let's go to Ryan Burns. Ryan. Hey, Coach, I had two questions for you. One, uh, what are your thoughts on having three Friday night games this fall, something that's more than any other Big Ten team? And then I was also curious if you know any more about the COVID opt-outs. Yeah, first of all, with, with the opt-outs and then the COVIDs and the injuries, you know, I'm probably not going to comment specifically on individual players, uh, especially with HIPAA laws and things like that. Uh, I think it's a very sensitive time uh, for everyone. And I'll let those people, if they ever have to be able to, to let people know why they're out, uh, I'll let them do that on their own. I think that's the, the right thing to do uh, with the opt-outs. Uh, and your first question was about what, Ryan? 
Friday night games. Three Friday night games as well. Oh, yeah. The Friday night games. You know, it's interesting. I think every coach was asked uh, by their administration, you know, would you ever be opposed to a Friday night game? And look, I'm open to, to anything. You know, I'm open. I, I come from the Mid-American Conference as a player and as a coach. So uh, Maxion was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four day weeks, nine day weeks. I mean, we did it all right. So I, I'm, I'm very open for that. Uh, I have a we have a plan for all of that of every it could be a three day week to a, 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 a you know, a a 16 day break. Uh, we have a plan for all of it because we've seen it. Uh, so I just said, we're open to it. Uh, it wasn't like, Hey, were you, were you open to three big 10 games on, on Friday nights? It wasn't that, but uh, I thought Mark Coyle, you know, came in and asked her, are you open to any Friday night games? I said, we're open to it. You know, uh, I'd, I'd prefer to make sure we do as much as we can not to have too many short weeks. Um, and again, the schedule came out. Uh, we're going to play games whenever they tell us to play games. We look at everything as a positive. It's always half glass full, half glass full of water, half glass full of air. It's always half full. So, uh, you know, we're going to take that as an advantage. We're going to take that as an opportunity for the University of Minnesota Golden Gopher football program to be on a national stage uh, and and have that type of brand. So, uh, again, the, the, the t when we play and what days we play, that, that that'll never affect our program. Let's go to Randy Johnson, Star Tribune. Randy. Yeah, hi, PJ. How are you doing? I'm doing late, Randy. Good to see you, man. You too. Um, just uh, facing a Don Brown defense, what special challenges does that present? And do you refer back to your uh, 2017 meeting against Michigan in preparation? Yeah, not a lot. Um, you know, there, there's been different coaches, different coordinators. Um, you know, that was our first year. Um, you know, I, I don't like to look back on those times very much, Randy. That wasn't exactly a, a fun game for us. Um, they're a really good football team. They're a blue blood. You know, whether you're talking about Don Brown, uh, Don, Don Brown on, on the defensive side, you know, uh, he's very good. He's, he's always been really good. He's got a great plan for everybody he plays. There's always unique wrinkles, new nuances of how he prepares for an offense. They're very talented. Uh, their D-line has two defensive ends that are going to be high draft picks that have incredibly high motors. He puts people in positions to be successful. So he takes your strengths of what you are and what you do well, and he will highlight that during a game. His defenses are very aggressive. His third down package is very creative. Uh, they're blitzing from everywhere. They're aligned in different positions. Uh, they constantly put stress on a quarterback, constantly. Uh, whether it's first, second, or third down, whether you're in the green zone, whether you're backed up coming out, whether you're in short yardage goal line, there's always a very unique plan for that particular situation. They're a very sound defense. Uh, they play incredibly hard, and they have skill everywhere. So uh, he's very difficult to prepare for. He's one of the best in the country for a reason. And there's probably 60% that we probably know based on what they've done in the past. And they've had all off season with, with, to be able to make it better, change it, develop it, create things that were going to be just maybe specifically for our game, uh, just like we have. Uh, and that's always the challenge of game one. So it's an, it's an enormous challenge for our football team in game one, playing against a defense like Don Brown's uh, and obviously a blue blood like the University of, of, of Michigan. But that's what makes it really fun and exciting as well. All right, let's go to Blake with the Daily Gopher. Blake? Hey, PJ, this will be your first season as head coach without Kirk Schrock as your offensive coordinator. And I'm just curious what that transition has been like for you this offseason and what you think Mike Sanford and Matt Simon bring to the table as co-coordinators? Yeah, I mean, you know, change is inevitable in this profession. You always have to realize that. Kirk Schrock is one of the best coordinators in the country. He's always been a very close, dear friend to me. Um, and it's, it's always difficult when, you, you know, you're working together, then you don't work together. Uh, we've had a lot of times together that were really good. We've had a lot of really hard times together. We forget that, you know, we've been together not only just during 11 and two and 13 and 0, but we were together in the one and 11s, right? The five and sevens, um, you know, and uh, that when we were producing on offense, when we weren't producing on offense. So I think, I think change is inevitable. And I always think change is healthy. Um, I think it helps you grow. It helps you, uh, you know, find out where you are as a coach, where you are as a head coach, where you are as, as an offense. Matt Simon brings a lot of familiarity to what we used to do. Uh, he's been really good in the room with Coach Sanford. I think they've worked cohesively together really well. 
Uh, Mike's got a lot of great ideas. Mike's got a lot of information from his past and his experiences of where he's been. He's got a lot of quarterback play and information uh, that really helps our quarterbacks. But I think the relationship between Mike, Matt and Mike has been critical and is critical for the development of our program. I really like where we are on offense. I really like the nuances, the, 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 the new things we've put in on offense and to make it fit our personnel, uh, maybe even better than it has. Uh, we have more personnel than we've had in the past, which I think has been really healthy for us. And you can see that with the benefit of recruiting in year four, you should start to see some of that. Um, but again, I, I think it, it, it's it, like, I, I keep using fun and exciting, but that's what it's about. It's about evolving. It's about changing. It's about making it better. It's about not staying the same and, you know, having the same values, but not keeping things stagnant. And I think this has been really healthy for our offense. It's challenged our offense. It's challenged all of our coaches to grow. All of our offensive coaches have had a lot more input uh, of what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, which elevates their coaching uh, and their knowledge of the game and offense and their input to the system. So, um, again, we'll find out where we are uh, when we play and we continue to play throughout the year. We'll look up and see where we are for 2020 and then continue to change our best. But I, I, I really like where we are right now. I really like our staff. I really like the cohesiveness of our staff uh, and how they work together. We'll take just a couple more. We'll go to Eric Strack, Minnesota sports fan now. Hi, PJ. Uh, you talk a lot about preparing for ghosts and the frustration, the frustration that comes with uh, preparing for new quarterbacks, new uh, weapons on offense. There's a lot of that going on in Michigan this year. So what has uh, this, this uh, preparation for this game been like? Well, you, you, you know, you basically, you know, you know, they have the same coordinator, right? And you know that, you know, I'm sure things have changed for them, but the personnel's changed. Um, anybody who looks at Milton knows what type of special talent he is. I mean, he's once in a decade type talent that comes through the program. When you're talking about his skill set, I mean, he is, he can throw the ball far, he can run, he's big, he's strong. Um, again, there's not a ton of data on him based on what we've been able to watch, but he's played in some games. We've watched his high school recruiting film. We've done a lot of those things and pulled film from everywhere we possibly can uh, to be able to evaluate him as a, a skillful player. Uh, and he's very talented. So when you're talking about the ghosts and I, I, I want to make sure it, it's not, it's not frustrating, it's challenging. And that's what makes it really fun. You know, I think when things get to a frustrating stage, you know, that that's, that's when you start taking away from uh, involvement of the program and, and moving forward and being able to be better tomorrow than you were today. So we're going to take every challenge in stride. We know that uh, Milton presents a huge challenge for us. One, because of what you said, there's not a lot of film on him. We know what type of player he is, and it's a very, very skillful player. Um, and the weapons around him can really run. Uh, they've lost some wideouts, but they've, it's Michigan. They've, they've got some, they got 44 four stars and two five stars on their team. So they, they've got plenty of talent and skill that, that, that can fill a lot of the positions that they've lost. But again, that's part of game one. Uh, that's the challenge ahead of all of us. The sideline and game, line, game time adjustments during the game are going to be critical for us. Uh, and we've got a lot of question marks on our football team as well that need to be answered. Take two more, um, Chip Scoggins and then Andy Greeter. So Chip, uh, you're up first and then we'll finish with Andy. Thanks, PJ. Along those lines about the question mark, do you have a sense of your defense's identity yet? Or when you have so many new faces as a coach, is there still kind of that uncertainty of what you're going to see, uh, and you know, until they play? Yeah, Chip, great question. You know, and I think the other thing to think about is, you know, you got guys playing together as a cohesive unit and then you get some guys – you know, whether test positive or whatever happens and then boom, they get pulled out. Then another guy steps in and that guy tests or something happens and boom, now you're down to your third guy and you don't know how that will all fit. Um, I think there's a lot of question marks and that's what I mean by this eight game stretch. Uh, there's going to be a lot of questions that come up every single week. I'm excited about where our defense is headed. Uh, I, I, th I think I have a good feeling about where we're at. But again, you don't know until the lights come on. You don't know until these guys actually play in games. Uh, and the one thing we pride ourselves in this football team is getting better throughout the season. We want to see growth from game one to game eight. We want to get better as the season goes. And that's what we ask our players. Keep changing your best. Don't judge yourself. Right. Let's not sit there and 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 
and whether good or bad, judge ourselves. Let's just keep moving forward. Let's continue to grow, keep rowing the boat, keep changing our best, and let's just continue. And then after eight, nine weeks, we'll look up and see where we're at, and then we'll have a whole offseason prepare for the 2021 season. So whatever we're doing now in 20, we know will benefit us in 21. We know that. It's very, it's a, it's a unique way of looking at it because now matters. It always matters. I mean, this is what matters is Michigan period, but there's also some unique circumstances that come into a head coach's uh, uh, decision-making that you have to decide too, of what's, what's best for the 21 season as well, uh, where you're guaranteed, hopefully, right. That, that 12 game, that somewhat normal type year. So, um, you know, It'll be interesting. There's a, like I said, it, it's like preparing for ghosts in a lot of areas, not just your opponent, but your own football team as well. So it's who can adapt better, who can prepare better and who can do it just right and be ready for the moment. And that's what we're going to find out. All right. We'll go to last question. Uh, Andy Greeter, Andy. Uh, Chip kind of stole my thunder there with the defensive question, but I mean, kind of brought up the, the COVID issue again, how many guys would you say are, going to be out here going forward here on, on Saturday. I know you won't talk specifics, but do you have a estimate on how many? And then what's the challenge with guys rising up the depth chart and going from scout team to in the first team room the next day? Yeah, I mean, I don't have an estimate. I know the number. I'm just not going to tell you the number. Uh, you know, and, and it's not about just uh, – it, it, there's a lot of reasons why, mm -hmm. right? Um, but this is how the whole year is going to be. There are There's no excuses. Uh, there is a there we've got to be able to find a way that our team has known that from day one back in March we said the same thing uh, before anybody was out whether you opt out whether injury whether COVID we said the same thing whoever finds a way to do this better for longer we're going to need the entire football team so it doesn't matter who you are or where you are on the depth chart it doesn't matter if you're on scout team you could be the starter tomorrow and that's been our message from day one and we've got to find a way to prepare just right Every single person's got to invest in that. The days of, well, I'm a, I'm a true freshman and I see some guys ahead of me and I'm going to be red shirted. Those days are over right now. There's a reason why the year is free. There's a reason why the year doesn't count against eligibility. And we're going to have to have all hands on deck. And that's, again, Andy, it's, it's not a frustrating thing. It's exciting because you're going to find it's exciting if you think of it long term. It's exciting if you think of it short term. Uh, is it? Is it a little bit nerve wracking at times knowing who's going to play, who's not, who you get the reps to. And then all of a sudden you find out on Thursday or Friday that they can't play for two, three weeks. Uh, yeah, that can be a little bit nerve wracking, but you respond. What you do is you respond. You put your oar back in the water and you respond. You do everything proactively to prepare and educate your team the best way you possibly can that it's not, if it comes, it's when it comes, I have to be ready. And if everybody buys into that, you're going to have a chance to be really successful as we've watched a lot of other conferences go through that. We've had the opportunity to sit back and watch a lot of that. So they have proof of what that looks like. So the number won't matter to me. Uh, that won't matter. Uh, you know, we have the green, the orange, and the red for a reason. Um, but the number won't necessarily matter to me. It's about getting everybody prepared to be at their absolute best. And then you had one more at the end, Andy. What was the last part? Just, you know, having guys that need to prepare from going from scout team to first team. Yeah, that, that's going to fall on, on the player's dedication, right? That's going to fall and test them immediately of how well, how much you're dedicated to this. Because one, you got to be in scout meetings. And then two, you've also got to be keeping up with the game plan, keeping up with the installs, taking mental reps, getting in to watch more film of yourself and other people in your exact position when you aren't getting those first and second team reps. So it presents those challenges. But listen, I mean... It's like 56 days, we'll look up. I think it's about 56 days, somewhere around there, maybe 60 days, we'll look up. That's all we're going to have is a 60-day sprint. Uh, and then we're going to find out where we are. And then if we're fortunate enough to get plus one, we'll get a plus one or wherever that's at. But we've got a lot of preparation and a lot of work to do. Uh, we've got a lot of things to do uh, in the film room, but it's exciting. And again, I don't want you all to think, you know, we have 65 players out right now. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, you know, I, I'm just saying as a whole, what could happen now, what could happen then, what could happen in six weeks from now as we continue to talk uh, and how and where my mindset is. Uh, but it's fun. It's exciting. Uh, the season is going to kick off with a rivalry game uh, at TCF Bank Stadium with college game day here. You, you couldn't ask for much more, everybody. All right. Thank you, coach. Thank you everyone for attending. I appreciate you it. You got it. Row the boat, Sky Go Gophers. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, PJ.